Hello. Hi, Joel. How's it going? Good. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I just swapped you over to presenter. Um, so you should have all capabilities that you need today. Do you have any slides or anything like that that you would like to share? I do. I have them pulled up on another screen, so I can try. Let me see if you can see them. Okay, awesome. How about that? Oh, yeah, nice. That was a smooth transition. <laughs> hey, that was, that was my first try. Who's we'll it? It's it. Like and you can hear me and everything. It's like. Yep, it all seems to be working beautifully today. Um, I am going to organize a few things on my end. We'll give it okay. about two, three more minutes. All right, okay. I can stop sharing for now. Is that helpful? No, go ahead and yeah, you can leave that up. No problem okay. at all. Just when people hop on, they'll see this nice presentation slide that you've created, which is perfect. Okay, perfect. I will hang out. I'll mute myself. Okay. And, uh, you just let me know when, when to start going. Awesome. Thank you. All right, and then just before we get started, Joel, as far as the chat goes, do you want me to um, call attention to them as they come in, or what do you feel most comfortable doing? I can monitor that for you if you'd like, or if you want to do that yourself, totally fine too. I will totally accept your offer on that and okay. let you call attention to it, and um, as they come in, I think is best. Okay, perfect. That sounds great. Um, and then we have quite a few people still joining in, but I do want to make sure that we um, give you the time that we promised. So um, I would love to get started and um, welcome to everyone that is tuning in today. We are so excited to have Joel with us today. Um, I have an introduction for him that I'd love to read to you guys as he is highly qualified. Um, and so it'll be great to hear from him. Um, as far as healthy lifestyles points go for attending today, you will see a sign in in the chat in a couple of minutes. We'll just wait for everyone to finish hopping on and then that will be posted so we don't continually have to post that throughout. Um, so without a further ado, let me introduce to you Joel. Joel Huff is VES program delivery expert and managing director of the VEST Care Center. Um, and 
before we dive in too much further, I did realize, so Blue Novice and VEST um, are one of the same. So Blue Novice is our EAP service through the county. Um, and you guys have heard Healthy Lifestyles teach all about Blue Novice and all their wonderful services. And they've just, they've had a name change um, and you'll be hearing the word VEST now. Um, if you want to, Joel, you can dive into that further, but just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that Blue Novice and VEST is of the same. Um, so, uh, Joel holds degrees and licenses, including LSUDC and LCMHC professional licensure and a BFA, MFA, and MS as a professor of theater at Elmhurst University and professional performer in the Chicago area. Joel worked in residential treatment with individuals facing addiction for six years before joining the best team. And Joel is here with us today to talk about seasonal affective disorder and strategies to cope with them. I'll turn the time over to you. Thanks, Joel. You are so welcome. Thank you so much, Brittany, for that fabulous introduction. That's awesome. I don't think anybody outside of mental health or like us nerds that like went to school and got licenses cares about <laughs> letters. Um, <laughs> but yeah, clinical mental health counselor and uh, substance use disorder counselor, uh, which is really how I got into this because of it, you mentioned in there the uh, the performance and that whole previous life that I had in acting uh, started also having some substance abuse issues of my own. And um, I'm coming up on nine years of recovery at this point. So uh, that is a little bit about me. And um, I got totally reinterested in mental health by uh, learning about myself and figuring out my own things. And and then that's that's really the impetus for me going back to school. So thank you so much for having me here today with all y'all. It's nice to meet you. I want you to know that I uh, I was a little nervous. And the, the reason I know I was nervous is because I put on my camera before this started. And I was like, my background is too bland. And I brought in a plant for you guys. So you have a plant. And I also <laughs> turned around like where I was facing so you could also see this map of the United States behind me. I was like, we don't want to bore them. Let's get like, we need a plant. It's so, a lovely plant. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Um, I will just draw your attention to since Brittany kicked it off. I think uh, I want to answer any questions and just kind of like cut through any confusion around that. If you'll look in the bottom of the screen, um, the bottom corner where you can see best right next to blue Novus above lecticon on my slides that's going to be on all the slides and i feel like that is the best way to talk about it um best and blue Novus are kind of the same thing um and we're just moving forward with the name best because james and alicia hadlock that were um founders of blue Novus, have left to focus on their coaching. James does a lot of executive coaching and like those kinds of things. And so um, Lecticon, who has always done all of our like technical support, everything with the app, all of the, all the other things that really run the company, the whole infrastructure has always been Lecticon and the care center has always been me. Um, so it's really just uh, a, a name change, all the same services, everything. You can still access it through the same app, like all that. It's just like the logos are changing. Like there's not going to be a big shift as far as how it affects you guys. All the same benefits that you're used to. And because of Salt Lake County and the way that you started uh, the relationship with us, you your company already accepted like all the eap plus benefits and the counseling and and the more support and that's really what vest and the name change is about is us shifting into offering eap plus and more services uh as a as a whole where a lot of people kind of realize uh, uh recognize or identify blue novus as like just the care center that's all we do and vest is um was purchased, uh, Blue Novus was purchased and uh, is now included in the best offering. So 
all the same people, my whole same care center team, all our same uh, customer uh, success people. Um, it's all just us and we're just doing, uh, Lexicon does a little more um, trainings, like online trainings, uh, which is super useful tool. And we just finished our uh, resiliency training, which I think is super cool. And um, And I even, Maybe I'll show you guys, depending on how much time we have at the end, just our little, like, uh, it's like a four minute little trailer of that whole training that we just put together. It's coming out um, and people are are purchasing it. So, um, yeah, exciting stuff. And you'll get a, a flavor of that um, if we have time for that video towards the end. If not, I'll be sharing it if you attend any of the monthly webinars or anything like that. And I just want to thank all of you individually for being here for mental health and like helping to fight the stigma around this and just raising your own awareness as we go into this colder time of year, you know, and when things get a little bit harder, it's darker longer, it's it's um, more alone time, maybe more isolation is encouraged by the different weather. So. Uh, the best thing we can do is attend something like this, get some new strategies, get some new um, ideas about how I can approach it and try to maybe have a different kind of experience rather than just be affected by it, you know, and um, and and just survive it, you know, as I maybe previously have done and I am definitely guilty of uh, in the past. And I have high hopes for it right now, too. You know, I'm excited um, about Halloween, but it also just especially the timing of this this week. We had a cold snap here in Utah, and it's like, okay, it's really real, everybody. It's starting to happen. It's coming upon us, and and it's here. So I love the timing of of this presentation. And if you have any questions or anything that you want to throw in the chat, Brittany's going to be monitoring that for me, and I love to turn it into a discussion. I am a licensed therapist, so. Any questions about anything at all mental health related, I am open, I am down, this is your time. I work for you and you just let me know how I can best make this time useful for you. And it, I love it if it turns into a discussion. So please hear, hear uh, anything and everything mental health, I'm here for it. So seasonal affective disorder. Uh, it's a real thing, you know, it, it, it actually affects people. It's diagnosable in the DSM. Uh, you can get treatment for it. Uh, I just want to run down some of the symptoms you can all read. So I'll hit the highlights, but it's late fall, early winter and go away when the sun comes back. That's the seasonal affective disorder that we see. It starts to ramp up um, and there's also a different kind of pattern that can happen for people, they have the opposite. They love winter and uh, and the fall, and and they start getting sad when it's when it's sunny and it's hot. And um, those, so it, there are different types of people, and I feel like you might just be whatever it is. It's in your makeup. You maybe you're genetically predisposed to either love or not love one of these seasons. So. Um, I just wanted to let you know, I think that's one of the most interesting things for me when I learned more about seasonal affective disorder. I think the more identifiable version is fall and winter. And there's also the opposite. The inverse uh, is also true for people. So um, here's some things that you can check in for, you know, how, how do I know if it's affecting me? Um, if you start feeling depressed, almost every day, losing interest in activities you once enjoyed, having low energy, having problems sleeping. I mean, I know that when my, everything switches, like in my own way that my temperature's regulated in my house, when it gets cold outside, there's different noises. The furnace smells different. It kicks on at different times. Like there's different stuff, like those little things we're creatures of habit. They can really affect us and and play into that. How how dry the air is, you know, these little things um, can can really affect and change how we might sleep. Um, 
you could experience changes in your appetite or weight. I know for me uh, that I start to really want like everything carb related uh, when it gets cold. Uh, and, and maybe that's just like the bear in me or something, but I, I want to get my, I want to get my body weight up so that I can just feels like hibernate or something, you know, or it's, it's too cold. Like, what was I thinking? I don't, I don't need to look good with my shirt off right now. I just need, I need donuts. I need pancakes. I need uh, cookies and, you know, and also the season is around, um, where there's candy and treats and all that kind of stuff is like on every countertop everywhere you go. So just noticing how that affects you though, actually, you know, I, I know for me, like I want it, I crave it, but I can almost feel the the bottom out of that roller coaster in the next, you know, half hour, right? Like if I go to a company thing and there's like crumble cookies and I'm like, Oh man, it's awesome. I want to try all five kinds. And then I'm like, an hour later with a headache in my office and not don't feel like I can get anything done the rest of the day because I ate too many cookies. Like I should have learned this by now, but I guess not. So anyway, just noticing sometimes how those things affect you and being careful, you know, like moderation and, and noticing, you know, what works for you and your particular um, makeup, because that's the thing, like when we know it's going to be a little bit harder, it's going to be a little bit darker, it's going to be harder to smile and like those kinds of things. It just is. It's like, oh, man, when I'm leaving work next week is the time change. So all the just getting ready for that. Like I when I got to work, when I woke up, it was dark. And when I'm leaving work, it's dark. You know, my whole day is in darkness, you know, so knowing that that is going to be out there and it's actually going to have an effect can help hopefully help you um, change your approach a little bit and and say like hey i need something for these winter months like i want to be a little more careful with how many donuts eat, i eat or how much alcohol i consume or you know whatever that is because it's going to be harder for me to maybe thrive with that lack of light uh, depending on how Maybe you love it, you know, uh, there's different types of people. Um, sluggish or agitated, I kind of covered that with my cookie experience, uh, but that can be a bigger thing where it's just like discouraging to go out or maybe there's there's more colds and things like that. And so um, when we're tired, when, when things are um, piling up on us combined with the seasonal changes, I might be a little snippier, right? I might be, uh, I have less patience for the people in my life. And if I notice that about myself, I'm the only one that can really affect that. You know, I'm the only one that can really make me have a better day. And if I notice, because here's the cold hard facts, like on a Saturday after I've slept in and, you know, I, I'm, you, it's hard to rock me off my center. You know, I'm like, yeah, great. Oh, whatever. Like the lawnmower's broken. No problem. You know, like those kinds of things just when I'm in a really good place, don't bother me. But when I'm in a really bad place, I'm like, are you, how loud are you chewing right now? Like what? So that's me. And I, I'm the only one that can help those things right and everyone I, it's easier for me to say it's everyone around me and oh people are so annoying it's like maybe i'm not in the best place like maybe nobody has a chance of nailing it with me today because i'm being grumpy or i'm not well fed or i'm not well rested you know i'm not i'm not in a good place to have a good day um difficulty conscious concentrating feeling hopeless worthless guilty and then uh bigger, even more serious signs where hopefully, you know, you're starting to reach out when you're having frequent thoughts of death or suicide. Um, the two different types of symptoms, uh, oversleeping, appetite changes, weight gain, tiredness or low energy is more, um, more active for the people with fall and winter, which is mostly what we're concentrating on today. We're we're trying to put a kit together to help us battle the winter blues. Uh, then if you maybe suffer from the spring or summer version, it's trouble sleeping, poor appetite, weight loss, and agitation, 
or anxiety. So we talked about how it's a real thing. It's a real problem. Um, what do we do? What can we do? How can we help ourselves? We're talking about what's the approach that's going to be best for me. Uh, light therapy is listed all over in the research for this. And I don't know if you, um, if you're familiar with any of these different things, um, but life, light therapy actually mimics outdoor light and you can buy these lights uh, that are like UV lights. Um, if anybody's seriously considering and really can't find a light that they think is going to work, email me. My email is going to be at the end and I can help uh, with that search for you. But you can, they're on Amazon. You know, if you look for like a light therapy light, you're going to get 10 options and you can kind of look through the reviews and, and there are specific, like a psychiatrist might recommend this. This could be in your recommended treatment plan if you really struggle in this season. And um, so, like I said, I'm happy to help consult with that. I know a couple that I could recommend. Um, there you go, Kathy threw one out, happy light. Um, they're good and just like any of this stuff, I might recommend one that I think is awesome and work for me. You might have another one, you know, that you're more interested in or that works better for you. And if it works better for you, it's the better light. Like, I don't care. You know, that's how all this stuff works with mental health. You know, whatever light would work for you that you're most excited about, that's good for your budget. That's like, you know, that's the light for you. Um, and I will say just briefly, uh, to share a little bit about my own kind of seasonal defect. I, I had this other season that lasted for like a year when my son came home from the NICU. And this is not a poor me story. This is a light therapy and how it helped me story. Uh, where he was on a ventilator with, and he had a trach. So you're not allowed at that point, like the first year that he was home, he always needed someone awake and alert, an adult, in case he came unconnected or whatever. So we split it up and did really weird sleeping habits and um, where we would trade off where somebody would stay up till 1.30 and then the other person would wake up at 6.30 and, and then we were all kind of awake all day. But anyway, we just took shifts. So anyway, that got weird because I was doing a lot of like graveyard shift type things. And, and um, the way that I used this light was it was how I started the morning. Even if my morning was starting at 1.30, in the bathroom with this light on really bright, I'm like brushing my teeth, you know, and it tells my system, hey, it's a sunny day. It's time to wake up. It's morning. You know what I mean? So, um, that's just my personal little story about how you might mix that into your schedule, wherever you think it would be most useful for you. Um, just 10, 15 minutes a day in your routine with some happy music in the morning, it's still dark, um, or you get home and, and you wanna like re-energize to have like a fun dinner, get home and like put it on in your space when you're getting ready to transition from work and like, I've got this light and I'm feeling good and I'm playing my music. That could be another way to kind of use it. Um, if necessary, and you start having like some more support and working with a therapist or a psychiatrist or even your own um, family provider, you know, your, your family physician, um, general practitioner, you could potentially use a little bit of support from antidepressants during this time of year, it's a hard time of year. And I will tell you, I, I shared that I've had struggles and I've uh, coming out of my substance abuse and like figuring out my own depression and those kinds of things. I've definitely been on medication before. I've used it a couple different times in the nine years since I've been in recovery. If I start feeling that kind of like looming darkness and, and I will just say like, there's no shame around that at all. Uh, it's, it actually can be beneficial. And I will also say that uh, all the science around that and the research that comes out around it is that um, exercise is 
just as good, if not better than any SSRI or antidepressant that you can take as far as like the, what it does and you can produce your own chemicals. However, I, I'm not saying like when I was really low, the last thing I was going to do was exercise. So it, it maybe helped me get to a place to where I could, that was even possible. And, and when I'm in good spots, I don't need it at all, but it doesn't need to be a shameful thing. And it can, it can help you just kind of like get to a more functional space where you feel like you can actually get some of those things done that you feel like, you know, I already know if I did this, then I would have a better week, you know? And then we just, when we're in those places or it's been dark, we're feeling sad. We're just like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick right here in this rut that I'm in. And that's, it's something so human about that and it happens to everybody so it's okay and just know that there's there's stuff out there stuff out there to help you and um the care center can be a good place to start um uh, psychotherapy you know this is psychoeducational psychotherapy type stuff that we're going through today i'm starting to work with you today oh sorry i heard myself there for a second i'm reframing some things we're we're looking at different approaches that might be helpful. Um, talking to someone, if you've never done it uh, in a therapeutic session is, is really helpful. Um, then for other people, yoga, Tai Chi, meditation, guided imagery or guided uh, meditations, and then music, art or therapy um, can also be helpful for this. Uh, this is something that I always just wanna cover so people know like what do i you know what when should i probably definitely mix someone else in to my treatment or my own recovery or how i'm looking at this um, when things start to really interfere with important parts of your life um, including work school and other responsibilities your relationships you know people are noticing a change or um if you're lucky enough to have brave friends that will tell you like, hey, you seem a little off, you know, which I am lucky enough to have those type of friends. Um, but yeah, checking in with people or you might just notice, you know, is there something you're denying? Is there something um, that's starting to interfere? Like here I am, I should just be at this meeting right now, but I hate everyone in here or, you know, whatever it might be. I don't know how it's gonna show up for you. Um, and then when things start to get really overwhelming, uh, feeling like significant distress and you can't really control or lessen them if you needed to, you know, like it's time for the meeting, but I can't stop crying or um, I, it's time to get people to school, but I, I you know, I can't or I, my anger just lasted all day, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, those kinds of things, if they're happening long enough, can start to show up as physical health problems and uh, and can be related to that stress or anxiety or depression. Um, there could also be other mental health issues going on. And I kind of like to talk about this as like, like a pile up, right? It's, it's winter, it's hard. I, maybe I lost somebody, this is my first time through this season without them. Maybe, you know, there's, now we're starting to get like things piling on and um, there's maybe depression also happening. My substance abuse is increasing um, or anything else that might be concerning to you or people that really care about you um, or are in your support system, which can be people at work. Um, and that this was listed in my car pile up, but something traumatic maybe happened at this time of year in the past or recently, you know? So just being on the lookout of, of, of what might be showing up for you. Um, and then finally, uh, where I really, really hope, you know, this is a hard line for me where um, if your stress or anxiety, depression is leading to thoughts of self-harm, hopelessness, or even suicide, I really, really hope, you know, that um, you're starting with the care center or, reaching out to HR or whoever you trust and feel like, uh, you know, you can start talking about some of those things. Cause uh, yeah, we would love to keep you around for sure. Um, and that's, that's a serious thing that I just 
it happens so much in our country and um, anything we can do uh, to be there for that and, and not judge that and let you know that there are safe places for anybody to reach out to. Um, I'm here for that 100%. Uh, what else can I do? Practical life things. Um, bundle up and actually spend time outside. When it when it happens to not be a gray inversion day, there's a little bit of sun. Like make it happen, you know, or or um, try to find a way to like drive up and out of it if you can have time on the weekend, you know, if there is inversion time or whatever, like get some sun in Park City. At least, I mean, it's not going to be like um, you're getting a tan or like hanging out at the pool or anything probably, but you can see the sun and you can try to find, maybe challenge yourself to have a new winter hobby or a new winter thing that you're excited about, you know? What would that be like if you start to try to daydream for yourself of, of how you might enjoy a winter day? You know, there's, there's plenty of activities out there. Um, my personal favorite, for just like, I don't have to be active or anything, but there's those ice castles um, that you can go check out. There's different kinds of like ice sculptures. And uh, I don't know, you could even uh, probably Google and find a bunch of people, go watch a bunch of people. You don't have to participate, but watch a bunch of people jump into some really cold water in the winter. <laughs> and I think that could be potentially therapeutic and exciting and just like, you can't do that when it's not winter, you know? So um, checking some of those things out, uh, go snowshoeing, um, finding ways to do things active, like in your home where you're still comfortable, you know, maybe you can, they, there's like all kinds of exercise things you could watch even on YouTube for free, or you could, depending on what your budget and what you feel like your interest level is, you know, there's like Peloton things and all different kinds of apps and whole communities where you can exercise like in your house, yoga, bike, whatever you're into, um, that, that can be a really good thing to kind of help you get through. Um, make a snowman. And I was just talking about using technology. You could be in one of those chats or groups or um, have a, a, a community online where, where you get to talk and connect and, um, and find other people um, that might uh, be helpful for you in these dark, colder months. Um, how can you do something for yourself? So this goes back to something that I said about the light therapy, you know, find the light that works for you, find a, um, if it works for you and something that works for yourself is gonna be like so much better than anything I can recommend, you know? Um, I This is, goes back to like the, the treatment center and sometimes, you know, people were there, they, they weren't very happy to be there. Um, and just kind of like challenging yourself to be open-minded and to, to like do something that, that you could benefit from or, or might be enjoyable for you. Um, I know I, I can't always get in that place. Right. And the way I would talk about it in the treatment center is if, if you guys are out there convinced that nothing is going to help you today that we're working on, or this place isn't going to help, you're going to be right about that. You know, there's nothing I can do to help you with your own kind of like growth mindset, your own kind of like um, feelings that I want to do something for myself. And that if I do do something for myself, that it's actually going to improve how my December goes. Um, here's some ideas for you if you want to kind of like challenge yourself. Um, putting it on your calendar, like scheduling a time to like meet with a person that you haven't talked to in a while. Maybe it's a lunch date. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it starts with just a text. I don't know. Um, and then you can also reflect at the end of the day, like what were the good things that happened for me today, you know, what was unique about today uh, that I maybe can learn from 
And that's another kind of growth mindset thing is uh, what, rather than like, this was failure and it was bad, like what lesson might there be from that today? Like why, what can I learn? How can I, how can I grow from what happened today or what discomfort I encountered maybe today? And is there something I can communicate about that? Uh, gratitude journaling, I could do a whole presentation just on the benefits and the science that's out there. It doesn't have to mean that you bought a journal at Barnes and Noble that was your favorite. It might mean that. I, I'm not judging that if that's what it is for you, but you can like actually writing it down, jotting it down in your phone. That is a skill where you say, I have to find five things today that I was grateful for. It's going to be work. And if you challenge yourself to do it, you can train your mind to find those kinds of things. Our default setting, what we're naturally good at is finding the negative, right? And that's normally how we roll through life. It's like, that's fine. That's cool. That's good. Oh, I hate that. That I'm so mad about it. I'm going to spend my whole day thinking about that instead of like all these other things that are actually okay. And that's not your fault. That's just how we are because we're supposed to, oh, it's negative. It hurts. And so I'm going to learn how to like not let that happen by making that really important. Um, but you can train away from that uh, by learning to focus on positive things. And sometimes the you can start really small. You know, if, if we were in my office right now, I have these gratitude flags that are are very basic, like thank you, life, thank you, breath, thank you, light, thank you, day, thank you, night. You know, the smaller the better. If you can really be grateful that you can see, like really get to get down to the, like that kind of core. Uh, beauty of life and that kind of like, wow, I, I'm breathing today. I'm employed, you know, like there, there can be, um, it takes work, but it, it is worthwhile work and the science around it's actually, you know, the research and the fancy universities and, and the papers that are written about gratitude right now, it, it's just, it's very undeniable. So if you're not doing anything of that, like that nature intentionally, that's, that can be a spot for you to to start to explore um, positive self-talk. I feel like a broken record on this one, but this was the number one thing that I needed. You know, this started my mental health journey. I was the meanest to me, you know, and if if we had friends that talked to us the way we talked to ourselves, we would be so mad at them. We wouldn't hang out with them, but we are ruthless to ourselves. And I was always under the impression that I needed to be that way so that I could accomplish a lot and get things done. And if I wasn't mean to myself, then nothing would get done and nothing would happen. And, and I was really wrong about that. Once I started being nice to myself internally, how I talked to myself, not like get out of bed, you loser, but like, Hey, you, good morning. It's time to wake up. You know, and I, I share that in my therapeutic journey and my own healing, I had a therapist challenge me to find somebody that I wouldn't say anything mean to. And at the time it was my three-year-old nephew. And so instead of like, you're such a loser, you're so stupid. Like, why would you do that? I, I changed to like, it's okay. Mistakes happen, buddy. Like, let's do it. And it, it was jarring. Like when I started to interject, interject and like change my own inner dialogue with myself. Um, yeah. So Check in with yourself, raise your awareness of how you're talking to yourself. And if you can improve on that, be nicer to you. Nobody's going to know, but you, so it, it's up to you. Um, do something fun, read for fun. I just barely did that for the 1st time in the last, like, 3 months. I hadn't read anything fun. It was all like self help or for school or whatever for like. Eight years or something, you guys. And then, like three months ago, I read a, a book called Scary Stories for Little Foxes. And it's just like totally pulled me in to this world of these foxes and all these things that were happening to them. And, you know, the mean foxes and the nice foxes and the, the, even the romances of the foxes, you know, it was like, I was like excited to go get to my time to when I could read 
uh, about the foxes. So anyway, reading for fun, awesome. But it doesn't have to be reading. Reading is not your thing. Listening to something you really enjoy, music that you love, you know, uh, finding ways to to really give yourself what you want. And I, uh, it's so silly. Like uh, I don't know why I've never used this in a presentation before, but I think it's Miley Cyrus has that new song where she's talking about like I can buy myself flowers, I can write my name in the sand, like all that kind of stuff. Like you can do that, and it's like it, there's that's not just like a poppy junk song. Like you can like spoil yourself, especially if you need it, you know. Um, and especially like that's way better. Like pick a movie and go go see that one you're excited about, you know. Um, whatever you earned it. You all are you know working hard and doing amazing things for the county which i benefit from you know like the infrastructure that you guys provide and all these facilities that you run here in the valley for us like super grateful for that and so you guys have earned it <laughs> please give yourself a hug for me do something that you enjoy um and then this one's cool something that is either going to make a good mood even better music wise or movie wise or the opposite you know if i'm in a really bad mood is there something that i, I want to watch that could cheer it up for me um cry it out hug someone cuddle laugh take a nap uh naps you guys come on let's hear it for naps that can that can start a whole day brand new <laughs> and if if you get a chance to in your adult life and uh, you feel like it's a good idea, just do it. Get serious about it. Change your clothes, brush your teeth, take a nap, like really do it. It can be so awesome and really change how your evening goes. Um, so there you go. There's some, uh, some self hugs for you. Everybody that's here with the county uh, can have access. You can see the logos change in a little bit there, but it's still, if you search the, the for the Blue Novus Care app, that's what's going to come up. It's going to be a different logo, but these are the same QR codes that we've always been sharing. It goes to the same place, same care center, same everything. So um, you have this available to you or your loved ones, right? The care center is there for your loved ones too. So maybe you're doing pretty well, but somebody that you care about or in your immediate uh, connections is struggling and and it, you've tried and now it would be helpful for them to maybe like maybe that would be helpful for you sometimes that's the best thing we can do is support the people that support you or take something off your plate that i don't know how to handle this or whatever like great send them to us and we got all the time in the world we have you know that's what the our people in the care center are there to do there's not going to be there's no kind of like quotas for how many calls you did today or whatever it's just a safe space anonymous confidential we're we're ready doors open um nothing's going to be shared with with anybody so i know your code uh that you can share with loved ones is um sl space county uh so you can you can totally um share that with anybody that is important to you and uh and also, if you've never done it, check it out. Give us a text, give us a call. Um, the way that those sessions usually begin is just like, what is this? How does this work? What should I talk about? What should I, you know, whatever, wherever you're coming in, or maybe you're coming in hot with something that you really know what you wanna talk about. You wanna get something off your chest, great. We are here for all of it and everything in between. Um, and that's an amazing uh, thing that, you know, we get to, to support all you people that work for the county and and uh, the county has provided the ability for for you guys to take advantage of that so i hope you will and i hope uh, you'll use it to to get the support you need or support for your your loved ones um as i said there's my new email you heard it here first joel at best eap.com yeah here it is um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the EAP plus side of things. I'm excited about uh, just we're getting to support people in new ways more than just the care center. And, and I get to see that firsthand 
how how we provide either those um, you know critical stress management situations for big events that happen in big companies or whatever it might be. Um, you can send me an email if you want to uh, go back and forth about the best light for you. You know, if you're looking into a therapy light or anything else that came up from this this presentation today or anything like, I don't know my code. I don't know, whatever. I'm having trouble with the app. I'm uh, whatever. I will get it. Bring me anything, anything and everything. And I'll be happy to respond and, and um, support you guys in any way you can, because it's an honor to support you guys that do so much for all of us in this county. So uh, questions, anything that you guys have for me, I am, I'm all ears. I, while we wait for questions to come in the chat, if people have them, I just want to say, I could listen to you talk all day long. This has been such a fun, wonderful presentation, bringing to light that, you know, there's power in coping and understanding and being mindful and listening to our bodies and the seasons change. Um, I also love how you highlighted to give yourself permission to show yourself some love, you know, and, and it can be lighthearted, right? Take a nap. Um, I, I love that. And I think you just bring such a wonderful, um, chill and understanding perspe perspective when it comes to mental health. And I think that's really needed because I mean, we need more people talking about mental health and, and the power that comes with keeping it in check and taking a second and understanding ourselves and where we're at. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your time. Um, and while I've been blabbing on about how much I've enjoyed this presentation, we have some questions. Um, we have a question that says, how can you help kids cope with the winter blues? especially when it's cold and the air quality is terrible. I'm just thinking about not having enough daylight as well as my kids love the daylight. How do we help our little ones? Any suggestions? So some of those things like trying to um, acknowledge that it's happening, right? Like it, it's one thing to, to with kids, like they know, they know what's up and we always want to be like, look over here, you know? Um, so I think starting with saying like, guys, are we feeling down today because it's another gray day? Like, and then like, try to like brainstorm and find things that they might be excited about. Um, one of my favorite moms that I worked with that had this really great idea was like, they found, um, uh, it was like a series that the kids were excited to watch. Um, and so it was a, a, a number of uh, like episodes, right? But they only watched it when it was like, and and screen time, you know, whatever. That's your all your choices or whatever. And maybe it's a, a a podcast or a book on tape or you know whatever works for you and your family and kids. But if you involve them in kind of like the brainstorming, and maybe now is a great time of year where you guys can. It's still sh the sun shining. Halloween's really fun. Maybe we're on a, a candy high and we're going to come up with like 10 things that we're going to put in the bowl that are like exciting for us as a group, you know? So for them, it was like, if we're feeling down, like it doesn't matter if it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, right after dinner, whatever, we're going to watch one of these episodes because I know it's exciting and I know you guys will be excited about it. Um, but what, what are some other things we're going to build? We're all going to build forts. We're going to turn on the therapy light and have a dance party. Everybody gets to pick their favorite song. So I know what your favorite song is. I'm excited about that. Or, you know, um, so coming up with ideas and empowering them by saying, look, it's going to be, it's going to be cloudy. It's going to be, you know, we might have some smog problems. We might have some of these things coming up. So I want to have some ideas that we're like, hey, you know, uh, part of my French, but like F you smog day, you know, like, what is the, what are we saying? And what are, what's our plan? Like, let's have a plan for it. So I hope that's helpful. I love that. I think that not only pertains 
to kids, but also whomever. I, when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do that with my husband. Like, how fun would that be? Because as adults, we still experience the same things and we always, we do that. Oh, today is a great day. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? You know? So that's, that's perfect. Thank you. I do love that bringing them into the problem solving is a great opportunity to, to have that conversation with your kids. Awesome. Yeah, because when they're um, getting creative, you're also getting buy-in, you know? Yeah. Like, We're all going to go roller skating. They're like, roller skating. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> If they're like, today it's your turn for your fun idea, Tracy. We're all gonna make like, I don't know, unicorn bracelets. All right, you know, <laughs> I've been waiting for the unicorn bracelets. And like, I didn't even know that was a thing. My best idea was roller skating, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I love it. Um, we have some individuals commenting that you've inspired them to go to Trader Joe's and get some flowers, buy themselves some <laughs> yes. flowers. We love that. Um, and then we have a question that's asking, does Vest have help with ADD? Yes, um, absolutely. I mean, we, depending on what's going on, I would just start with the care center and then depending on, um, what kind of support you're looking for, we can connect with anything from there or give resources or recommend books or, you know, what, whatever you're looking for. So absolutely anything mental health related brain yeah please add awesome um, yeah. um to further plug that so when you download the app um i don't know if you guys can see but all you have to do is this is your main screen and you just click text or call and that pulls you directly to the care center um so when joel's talking about reaching out to the care center it really just is as easy as opening the app and that's that front screen. So definitely. And they've always been really awesome about if they don't necessarily have the answer, or if they don't have specifically what you're looking for, they will refer you out to um, reliable um, resources and resources that they have and that also that we have throughout the community as well. So you can never fail with reaching out to the care center. It's always a really great place to start. Breach. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions that they would like to ask before we sign off for today? Okay. I don't see anybody attempting to type, so we will leave it at that. Um, Thank you so, so much. Again, you're a phenomenal presenter. You're phenomenal at what you do. We really appreciate having you a part of the county's team. You're just, you're so great. Well, we should probably hang out more, Brittany, because I'm loving all these compliments. This is awesome. I'm, I just got mental health help from Brittany today. You guys have witnessed it. And, and that <laughs> felt really good. And what my final joke is, I didn't even know it, and I didn't know I was going to bring in the Miley, you can buy yourself flowers, but I did it. I bought myself a plant. I brought it in here for the presentation at the beginning. I was yes. like, presentation means a plant. <laughs> we love it. We love it. We love to see it. Well, thank you so much. And thank Thanks you for all your time our... today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, you Joel. Bye-bye. Um, those that are asking, there is a sign in chat in the comments. Please go to the comments. I just reposted that as well. And you can click on the Survey Monkey link and get your 10 points for attending today. And your friendly reminder that Healthy Lifestyles points are ending tomorrow. So you were waiting for your sign to upload anything. Here is your sign. Hey, everybody. See you later. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye.